Hello guys, in this video I will show you a simple example of unit testing in Laravel based on one of my previous videos about refactoring if-else statements. So imagine a function that calculates taxes for the user, for the account. It is placed within a service or with some kind of class that is called from home controller. So in the controller you call that function and calculate the taxes for the logged in user and then you just show them like this one. So tax has to pay some kind of amount which is calculated from the database and I've seeded some dummy data for that user and that is working fine. Now you need to change that function to be more simple. So your task as a developer is to refactor that method to avoid so many if-else nesting statements. And this is exactly what I've done in the previous video earlier this week so the link will be in the description you can watch that but I did it without any testing. And I thought to shoot a follow-up showing the exact situation how I would do that in reality. And you could apply that to any complicated function that you need to refactor to make sure that your refactoring didn't break anything existing. So for that we would need to write tests first. For those of you who are not familiar with unit testing or you were afraid to try it, that would be the perfect video. So imagine how you would do that without unit testing by testing manually. After refactoring of that function you would have to check a lot of things manually. So log in with some user and test if every case is correct. So let's see what cases do we have. So we try to find a user and if that user is not found the taxes should be zero. So that's one case we would need to test. So try to call that function with logged out user. And that would be actually pretty hard to test manually. And then another test is if user is taxed, so there is a field in user database in the table. So if user is not taxed, the taxes should be zero. So that's another thing you would need to test is log in with uh, non-taxed users and see if it's zero. And then two more cases to test. Calculate the income. And if that income is above 50k per year, then the taxes should be 20%. Otherwise, it should be 15%. So you would need to do quite a lot of manual work either generating that income records or using some existing users and finding which is above 50k or below 50k. So wouldn't it be cool that some kind of robot would do testing for us? Guess what? That is called unit testing. So the most simple way to think about automated testing, if you haven't done it before, is just taking what you would have done manually and write that in the code. So every time you need to test something, the code would be run and would tell you if everything is fine. So that's why in the long run you would save time with unit testing to compare with testing manually every time. And this is what I've done here. Taxes test. It's already written. I won't live code it, but I will explain everything. So this is the file that you should generate in PHP artisan make test taxes test. And every function of that class will be actual case that we described just a minute ago. So test if it's not taxed, if it's existing and stuff like that. Important part here is how we fake the data. So we would launch those tests on some fake separate database and there are multiple ways to handle it but my personal preference is to create a separate database just for testing. It would be empty and on every test it would be filled in with some kind of dummy fake data. And that is handled by refresh database. So inside of your test case class you just go use refresh database. And that would mean that every time the test is run, the database will be wiped out and whatever you seed inside of those functions, those records will be created and then destroyed after the test is over. That's why it's hugely important not to run tests on live database. And I mean not even live, live, but in your local environment, you could accidentally delete some important data for you. To set up that, there is a file phpunit.xml by default in Laravel and there's one important parameter, db connection. And by default it is SQLite, so SQLite in memory database, and you could potentially use that, but I prefer to use the same database as I would use in production, which is MySQL in my case. So I change that SQLite to MySQL testing, which will be a driver that I will create in config database file, and I just copied and paste everything that is in MySQL, copy, paste and change one parameter. Database would be db test database. So separate database name I would create it in .env file. So this way everything that we launch is on testing database. Now let's get back to our test and see what are we actually testing here. First test as I mentioned is calculating that non-existing user has taxes zero. 
and we pass user ID 1, which doesn't exist in our database because it's empty, and the syntax of function assert equals is, as you can see, that expected result of that variable is zero. If it's not zero, it will throw an error, and let me show you that. For now, I've commented out every other function, and let's run that PHP unit testing. How to do that is in your terminal, you just do vendor bin php unit from the main folder of that Laravel project. And see the result is one test, one assertion means one check. And the result is green and that dot means successful test. To show you a failing test, so for example we would expect taxes of $10 and relaunch that php unit and now it throws an error which is f failed test and it would show you exactly the error. So failed, that zero matches expected 10. And exactly on which line, so Texas test 18, we go to that line 18 and this is our failure. So the whole logic here is what we would do is we have that method, we would write tests for it, we will run that and make them green, so all those tests will be successful, and then we will change that method into much shorter, like this one and then rerun the test to make sure it's still successful for all the same cases. So let's go back to our test and uncomment one by one. Next method is test that not text user is not text. And every method name should be quite descriptive and don't be afraid to make it long. But that is exactly the purpose and the point to make that descriptive to know which case is failing. And every test consists out of two things, setting up, like preparation, and actual testing. And it could be a few things inside of the same method. So preparation, for preparation I use factories. Factory is a class that could help you seed fake data. I use faker for something. And factory for user class actually comes from the default Laravel. So if we go user factory, that is default Laravel and I didn't change anything. So it just seeds the fake name, fake email, and some more columns. So I create a factory for one user, and I can override some parameters. So in this case, I need to override the parameter that is text is false. By default, on the database level, in migration, it is set to true. So I have that non-text user, and I pass that as a parameter to that service function. And then I check, I assert that taxes for that user is zero. And also we need to write another test, so actually create the transaction for that user and then check that the taxes is still zero. And also we use a factory for another class, income class. Income is just an eloquent model and income factory looks like this. Filling the fields with random entry date a year from now, a year until now, random amount of money, random description and user ID 2 which was just a local user for me and I can override it anywhere I want. So in this case, I override user ID to the same non-text user. Entry date, I need to make sure it's last year date. So that transaction should be taxable unless the user is non-text. And let's rerun our tests again, PHP unit. See, now two tests successful, but three assertions, so three checks, which means that in our second test we have two assert statements, assert equals and assert equals. And also you see two dots here, one dot represents one test method. And similarly we have other methods, test income above 50k is taxed as 20%. As I said it should be really descriptive, clear and readable. So we take variable of 60k income, create transaction for that income and then assert equals this time not zero, but expected income is 20% from the, from the income, I mean expected tax. And then another method, test income below 50k is taxed as, at 15%, which is this. So those are almost identical. Remove the comment and let's run our whole test suite, it's called test suite. Now we have four tests, five assertions and everything is green. And this is the first thing you need to reach, first milestone, before changing any code. So you need to write out all the scenarios as you would test them manually to make sure they are still working. And now we go to actually change that method. So how I did it step by step you can watch in that other video I mentioned, the link is in the description. But basically it's the same thing just with less if statements. With early returns 
a return that is zero if a user is not found or user is not taxed. Then I calculate income and then use ternary operator to calculate income before, I mean below or above 50k. And now let's switch the names of the methods. So let it be calculate taxes and this calculate taxes old. And also before rerunning our tests, let's make some kind of a type or some kind of an error here. So let's say we did 0, 0, 02 instead of 0, 02, so 2% 2 uh, instead of 20. Rerunning our test and it should probably throw an error. And this is exactly what is the point of all of that. To see an error after refactoring, so same tests that were running before with green light and everything was clear, now is failing. And then you debug, so taxes test 45. Let's go here. So this one is failing. Test if above 50k is a 20%. Then we go to the service and see, which will probably be easy to identify the error. We fix here, click save, we run the test, and now it's all green. So this is a typical example, pretty simple example, but it could be applied to much bigger project. If you need to refactor some big part of your application, first write tests if you don't have them, or maybe add more methods, more cases if you need them. And in fact, bigger part of unit testing is not actually writing the code, but more coming up with scenarios. So on paper somewhere or in your head, just list out the scenarios that you need. Then the work is to write it out in coding format, in unit testing, in PHP and Laravel. And then you are more confident to rewrite that method or that part of the application. Because if you fail at something, then your unit test or feature test should cover that. That's it for this video. If you want to know more about unit testing in Laravel, I have a special course called PHP Unit Testing for Beginners in Laravel. The link is on the screen, so you can check that out. Also, subscribe to the channel, which I'm shooting daily videos now. And see you guys in other videos.